Okay, so what we're going to do in this video is to go through the first of the example practical reports you looked at during the PM150 workshop. And I'm going to try to link some of the things that the student has and hasn't done to the mark scheme, which is here on the right hand side. So you get an idea about where students may have gained or lost marks. And we'll look at the three different reports and try to highlight the strengths and weaknesses of each. So the first thing that we're actually looking for uh, is a title. So does the title clearly describe the experiment that was carried out? And in this report, the title simply states standard curve experiment. And that doesn't really tell us very much. It doesn't tell us what the standard curve is of. It doesn't tell us where the samples that are being measured has come from. And it doesn't really give us any indication about why the experiment was important, why it was carried out. So this is actually quite a weak title. I would say this would probably only get one out of the five marks that was allocated. The next thing we're looking at is the aims, which is worth 10%. Are the aims of the experiment clearly described? Does the aim provide sufficient detail that the key points of the experiment can be understood? And again, like the title, the aims are quite superficial, they're quite vague. It says that we're using a standard curve to determine drug X concentration in blood. So this part about determining the concentration in blood is good, but it doesn't give us any indication as to why we're doing it, what the importance of drug eggs is, or why we're using a standard curve. So again, the aims are quite superficial, quite weak, and we'll probably only get a couple of the marks available for that section. If we move down to the results section, then the first thing that we're looking for is a description. So is there a clear description of what the results show? And this results section simply opens with a table, which is not very good practice. The results should be a narrative. It should offer you a description and a, a, a try to tell a story. So you need to also describe what was done and also why you've carried out certain experiments. So you would need to give some context as to what was done here. So you'd need to state that this was a standard curve and why it was done. So this student wouldn't get any of the marks available for the description or the narrative. Looking at the table, so there are actually several things that we're looking for here. So we're looking for completeness. We're looking to see whether the data is given to an appropriate and consistent number of decimal places. We're looking to see whether a standard deviation of mean has been calculated. And we're looking to see whether the legend fully describes the table contents. So is the table complete? Well, looking at it, we can see that it's not because we know that we're looking for a mean and a standard deviation, which isn't present here in this table or in the second table either. So neither of these tables actually provides all of the information that was being looked for. Is the data given to a consistent number of decimal places? Well, yes, each of the readings is actually given to three decimal places, so that's good. So we are getting a consistent number of decimal places. This is also an appropriate number given that this came from a spectroscopy experiment where you would expect the data to be given to three decimal places. What's a little bit weaker here is that we don't know what the units of the concentration are. So it would be good to actually have those units embedded in the table. And we don't know what the wavelength these readings were actually made at. So there's no way that somebody reading this results would actually be able to replicate this experiment in any way. In terms of a legend, we simply have word absorbance. Again, it doesn't tell you very much about what was done. So we need a better description about what that table actually shows. Uh, so this would probably only pick up around about sort of three or four marks for the consistency of the data. So there's a lot of things that could be improved in these tables. When it comes to the actual graph, well, unfortunately, the student didn't actually give us a standard curve. So we can't really determine very much from this at all. So what has been plotted appears to be the data that's within this table. So it looks like the mean and the standard deviation have been calculated, but actually not shown, and then plotted on the graph. The chart actually isn't uh, an appropriate way of representing these data. So each one of these patients is a discrete individual. And the line graph would suggest that we were measuring a continuous variable, so maybe the, uh, the, the amount of drug over time, as opposed to the amount of drug in four individual patients. So these data would be much better represented as a bar graph as opposed to a line graph. Uh, we don't have any axes labels, so we don't know exactly what's being measured, so that's weak. And we don't have any chart titles. This has been lifted directly out of Excel, 
the student hasn't bothered to actually say what the uh, the data is showing. Because the student hasn't actually given us a standard curve, we cannot determine whether or not the concentrations uh, are appropriate. We haven't had any conversion to concentrations. So this graph actually would not gain the students any marks at all. Okay, so we don't have axis labels, we don't have a title, and it's not an appropriate format. So the graph wouldn't actually get any marks. The student also hasn't provided any indication of the calculation. It would be impossible because they haven't actually given us a standard curve. So they can't do the calculation. So we don't actually know what level of drug is present in the blood of these patients. If we look at the discussion, the discussion is purely descriptive. And this is based on the absorbance values only. So nothing can actually be drawn conclusion wise. And the student is simply saying that patient four has the highest concentration, which it does based on the absorbance value. Patient three has the lowest and the patient one and two would benefit from the drug. But because nowhere in the report does it actually say what level the drug has to get to or why the drug is important, these uh, actual sort of statements cannot be justified. They can't be backed up by anything from the report. So the discussion, again, is very weak. It would probably only pick up about 5% of the marks available uh, for the pure descriptive element. This particular submission doesn't have any references. There's nothing referenced in the text. There's no citations and there's no reference list at the end. So there's no evidence that the student's actually gone out and done any work outside to, to back up and gain knowledge of this field. So the references again would get zero. Overall, looking at this paper, this is a very weak submission. Uh, this would suggest to me that the student has submitted it very last minute and hasn't put much effort in. Uh, and the reality is that this paper would be a fail. So it'd probably only get around about 20, 25% of the marks available.